Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegumbleaware.org. A very warm welcome back to the Racing Post Football Postcast. I'm delighted that we are back. The new season kicks off. I'm Bruce Wellington. And joining me to look ahead to the new season, Mark Langdon and Dan Childs from the Racing Post Football Desk. And we've also got Paddy Powers, Brian McDonald. So, lads, it's been very busy summer. We've had the Women's World Cup, AFCON. We've had the uh, Copa America. It's all been good, but it's good to get the decent stuff back. Well done with your efforts on this, the big kickoff, the most magnificent read, the most essential guides to the new season. And if you didn't get one free in Monday's Racing Post, go to racingpost.com, shop, and you can buy one. Great value at three and a half quid. Mark, what's been your highlight of the close season? Have you been getting very much involved in all this stuff or have you recharged? Um, yeah, I haven't had too many um, bets. And I did like the under 21s. I always like to watch um, the, the Europe, the, sort of the, the, the stars of tomorrow. Who's um, going to be the biggest star from that? I, well, I mean, I think the in terms of who performed the best, um, I mean, you would probably pick someone out from Spain and Ceballos um, was very good. Of course, has just gone on loan um, for, from Arsenal uh, to Arsenal. I quite liked Billick. You know, it was, it was, Arsenal looked like they could be selling to Derby for around 10 million quid. I thought he did um, excellently. And th there was a couple of Italians, Chiesa, son of Federico Chiesa, son of Enrico, who, um, you know, used to dazzle back in the sort of glory days of um, the Gazetta generation. I thought he was good for Italy as well. Uh, Dan, any, what was your highlight? Which oh, tournament no. did you like the best? Probably the tournament I liked the best was the Cricket World Cup, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. But um, no, no, I mean, you, you refresh, don't you? Yeah, I refresh yeah, in you the summer off, and, yeah. and try and get myself a clear head and I feel you know, good to go now for, for good. the domestic. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. OK, well, in that case, without further ado, what we're going to do today is we're going to try and point you the way of some really good anti-post punts on the Championship, League One and League Two. Next week, we'll do the Premier League. And we will also look this week at some of the best bets for the first round of matches because, of course, the season starts proper on Friday night. Luton versus Middlesbrough. Looking forward to that very much. Brian, let's look at the championship and if you can give us Paddy Power's latest show on who's going to win the title. Yeah, so we have Leeds, um, short price favourites at 4-1. to one. Fulham are next at 6-1. to one. West Brom, 9-1. to one. Cardiff, 10-1. to one. Stoke in at ten to one. Brentford we rate highly at twelve to one. We've got Huddersfield fourteens, Middlesbrough sixteens, Bristol City sixteens, Derby seventeen to one, Nottingham Forest twenty two to one, Preston twenty fives, thirties bar those. And Brian, just tell me about that Leeds price because I'm fairly sure they weren't as short as four to one when last season finished. No, they weren't. Leeds, uh, they're the obvious candidates for the title this season and they've been well supported from punters ever since Bielsa announced he will be staying. We are ducking them at 4-1 to one for the title. Um, over 30% of all stakes in, the, in our outright market have been on for Leeds, so we'll be hoping in the office that they have a bit of a meltdown towards the end of next season as well, but they are probably one of the shortest price fives um, to go off in the championship in a long time. They are. It, it seems short to me, Mark. I mean, do, can you justify 4-1? to one? Well, yeah, I, mean, I think last season they were clearly the best team in the championship on just all metrics other than points gained really um, you know I think if, if you watched them sort of regularly they were the, the standout team I don't even think that they collapsed at the end of the season in terms of fatigue and that was you know the often sort of said about um, Bielsa teams that, that they can't finish out seasons I just disagree with that um, their performances were good still they just didn't manage to get the um, you know the, the wins when really their performances deserved it and uh, I think Bielsa's clearly the standout manager um, in, in this division I mean, if he was in the Premier League you'd say he was one of the best and I think Helder Costa's goals you know he's on loan from Wolves I think that's going to be a massively important aspect now for Leeds because that was the one area can they get goals outside of Roof and, and maybe Bamford and I think that Costa does that. Is Bielsa so good that he might actually end up being in the Premier League at some point. And if, for instance, it all went wonky with Solskjaer, or not just Solskjaer, but someone else who, you know, isn't he one of the people that the Premier League clubs would look at if there's a pre-Christmas sack? I think he's, he's so unusual and so kind of loyal. I don't see him, I don't see him walking away. No. For, no, no, not not at all, really. I mean, he could get sacked, I suppose, if things don't go well and he just quits. But no, I, I mean, I think Leeds are very deserving favourites. I preferred it when they were 8-1 to one at the, the start of the summer, but I still think they're the team to beat. So you're tipping Leeds? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're tipping Dan? 
Uh, I like Leeds, but I also like Fulham. Fulham are a bigger price, so, so uh, I'm going to go with them. Um, I've, I've not really got a lot to say against Leeds. I just I, I'd echo the point about needing the goal scorer. Created a lot of chances. Um, I mean, Norwich had the goal scorer, didn't they? With Pukki, he was the one that sort of took their chances, got 20 odd goals, uh, and that's what Leeds lack. I'm still not sure they've got that player, but uh, I do think they'll be up there. But Fulham, their front three. You keep Mitrovic. Mitrovic, he was handed a five-year deal. Fantastic coup, really, uh, you know, to get him to stay. Uh, and they've added Cavaliero on loan from Wolves, who did well in the championship before, and Kanaka from Brighton. I mean, that's when, a brilliant signing. That's there. a massive signing. I mean, he, he got 15 goals for Brighton the season they went up, and, and I think it was 10 assists as well. So he's a huge influence, and he's still been playing regularly from in the Premier League as well. Played most of their matches in the Premier League. So uh, can I just say though that why yeah. do you think Brighton have let him go? Maybe the, the manager, maybe a new manager, uh, different ideas. Uh, but um, there's been question marks over A's attitude and yep. application and that kind of stuff. So I mean, he did pick up that horrible red card last season. He did, he? and there've been some, right been some it, off, there've been some off-field stuff as well. I think it's fair to say. So I mean, but he also, I mean, I he, you know, his body of work at Leicester was decent as well, wasn't it? I mean, you know, I, they, I know he's had the, his moments, but I think he's a, he's a bit of a fragile character, and he's a sort of guy that needs to be loved. And but I think if he's playing. Week in, week out, then you, you're more likely to get the best out of him. Like you know, like the last time he was in the championship. Um, the other side, I would, I've, I've tipped for promotion. I think could go well. He's Nottingham Forest. I think they've been a, for a while. I've been assembling some good players there. Some of them are ready to do the business now. Carvalho, who they paid big money for, started to do a lot better towards the end of the season. Uh, Joe Lolly is, is an outstanding talent. Uh, you know, been linked with a few Premier League clubs. Hopefully, they can keep him. You know, before the window shuts. And they've added a couple of good ones. Rafa Mir from, from Wolves, who's been in the, the Spain under 21s. Uh, Adoma, who was, you know, played a lot of games for Aston Villa last season. So, and, and the manager there, Lamushi, I just I don't think he's going to be, have to be brilliant to be better than the managers they've had. I think uh, I think O'Neill, um, with a good set of players, didn't really t do as well as he could have done. And I think there's scope for big improvement there. Do you think it's a slightly weaker division on paper this year? I, thought I do. I, I, I love yeah, the championship yeah. last year. I yeah. thought it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I thought it was a captivating season from beginning to end. Yeah. I'm looking at this season, I'm just thinking... Hmm, yeah, it, it goes against sort of, sort of like the, the lazy cliches about being the, you know one of the toughest divisions. I, I, I agree, it's a little bit bit less competitive and that's because uh, I think a lot of it's the teams that were in the playoffs last year often they come back stronger but I think uh, you, you look at Derby I mean they lost their two lone players haven't they you know, Harry Wilson um, and uh, Mason Mount were, were big influences for them West Brom lost Jay Rodriguez Dwight Gale so they're quite a bit weaker and so, so once you, you you drop your aspirations for those things, Middlesbrough cutting costs, Pulis gone, you know, you, you, you start to follow, go down the league and you, you, you're struggling to find that many big contenders. That's why I think Fulham and Leeds have got such a, a good chance. Brian, who's your championship choice? Yeah, I, I like Fulham and Leeds as well, but if I'll, uh, if I'll pick someone else from those, I like Cardiff. Um, I think they have a chance of bouncing straight back up into, into the Premier League. Neil Warnock has... Um, He's been out of this division. He's he's got promoted out of this division three times. They've got a fantastic signing of uh, Aiden Flynn from Middlesbrough. Bobby Reid should hit goals. He's hit goals in in the championship before. So I think Cardiff uh, are, are a good chance of going straight back up. And chaps, if we do think that maybe it's not quite the most formidable championship lineup of a lo uh, for a long time, name a team from further down that could maybe you know there's usually one, isn't there, a big price that that forces their way into the picture for, for a long time at least. Mark, who might that be? There's a couple. I mean, um, Brentford, Paddy Power have got really short, but um, you know if, if they keep some of their players like Mope and, and, and stuff like that, I mean, they become massive runners um, for me, but they're very difficult to judge until the end of the transfer window. Ollie Watkins is being linked with a move elsewhere, Ben Rama as well. So, I mean, maybe we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Middlesbrough, I think, are quite interesting. Now, this is a team that's going off, all, what, double the price they were last season. I look at their team and you still got Randolph, Ayala, Ebola was um, player of the season at Blackpool, Shotton, Clayton, McNair, Savile, uh, Johnny Howson. I think Wing and Tavernier could, could both do better under a more progressive manager and a Sombolonga up front. Basically, we, we're assuming that Jonathan Woodgate, or the prices are assuming that Jonathan Woodgate is no good. Um, Maybe, maybe he is. I mean, he's worked under a lot of good managers. He's he's offering to play a much better, more progressive style than Tony Pulis did, and maybe that's what a lot of these players I've just mentioned need. So, I mean, they would, you know, if price wise was tipping one, it would probably be Middlesbrough in that they were, you know, they're now double the price they were. Still got a lot of the players, um, but question marks over the manager. And I think Preston will do well. Um, Gallagher 
uh, and, and you know uh, Pearson in midfield uh, are, are big players for them. Uh, Brown scored a lot of good goals um, last season as well. Uh, in terms of like Alex Neal, he stayed last year when West Brom came calling. I think that could be a tip within itself that he didn't want to go to the Hawthorns. He thinks he can reach the Premier League um, you know, at, at Preston as well as what he could at West Brom. So uh, a, a big old price. They might sneak into the playoffs and gain promotion. Dan, a bigger price team to follow from you? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to, to Blackburn. I, I, I think they're, they're, they're progressing nicely under Tony Mowbray. Uh, Took them back, back straight back up, didn't he, at the first attempt? And then last season, people thinking, you know, it's it's a it's a big gap. Uh, you know, they might have to, to to just fight against relegation, but they're actually more pushing for the playoffs really than, than worrying about uh, looking over the shoulder. And and they're stronger again. He's they've got a, a talented young team, but he's added some good experience there. Bradley Johnson and Stuart Downing are used to playing for teams that are competing at the, the, the top end of the division. Kept Bradley Duck at the moment. There don't seem to be any sign that he's going to go. Um, and they've brought Sam Gallagher as well, who's been on loan there from, from Southampton for £5 million. Pounds. So uh, I think Blackburn, um, you've got, you know, you got Mulgrew and Lenehan, decent centre-backs there as well, nice and solid. I think they could go well at a big price. How about you, Brian? Have you got a slightly bigger price for us? Yeah, well, Mark touched upon um, Brentford and our uh, our championship guru in the office. He does um, he does rate Brentford stronger than the industry. We have them at twelve to one. He rates them stronger than the industry every single year, and he's he's unfazed by them again this season. Um, it was their away form really that let them down last season. Obviously, they lost Dean Smith to Villa um, throughout the season. But now that Thomas Frank has had a full preseason with the squad, they've kept hold of Neil Mapai for now. If they do keep him. Um, when the transfer window shuts, we fancy them to be towards the right end of the season come May. Okay, what well, gives a relegation show, Brian? Charlton fifteen to eight, Barnsley five to two, Reading are three to one, QPR seven to two, Birmingham seven to two, Wigan seven to two, Hull are four to one, Luton Town four to one, Millwall four to one, Blackburn eleven to two, Sheffield Wednesday six to one, Swansea six to one, and eight to one Verdos. Mark, before we start looking at individual teams that may go down in the Championship, if you look at what's happening at Bolton and at Bury, and there's a few other clubs that are also struggling. Yeah, I think punters have to factor in that you could be getting teams suddenly getting deductions and, and jumping into relegation mire. So it's, it's a bit of a kind of, you know, it's a bit well, of a Birmingham, snake pit, this, isn't it? Yeah, well, Birmingham had the point deduction last year for slightly different reasons. You know, they, they broke the transfer embargo, didn't they? But, I mean, there are issues. I, I mean, Dan was talking earlier about the, the weakness of the championship. I think it's probably because half of them are not signing players because of financial um, fair play. Um, one that I've... I mean, they're just a terribly run club. I mean, Cholton, I, I, I think, are very deserving favourites here. I mean, the only reason I can sort of think to say that they'll stay up would be Lee Bowyer. Um, you look at the team, like they're running on the same budget that they did in League One, which is unfair when you've gone up a division. You look at the players they've lost. I mentioned Bielik earlier on about how well he did in the under-21s. They're talking about maybe him going for 10 million quid to, to Derby. Uh, Cullen in midfield, aribo has gone to Rangers. They lost Grant to Huddersfield in January. I think that they, um, they're going to find it very tough. And I suppose Hull would be another team that's not particularly well run at the moment, the fans, there's, there's a right old disconnect there. It wasn't that long ago that Grant McCann was being sacked by Peterborough um, and he then did a, a kind of renaissance man job at, at Doncaster and he, he's got him his move to the championship. But if you just said to me when he was sacked at Peterborough that he'd quickly be making a championship manager, I'd, no way um, for me. And I just do wonder if they'll keep the likes of Bowen because there are teams sniffing around them. So they might be the one at a bigger price that could and struggle. Midfielder apparently, Henriksen, has uh, not been appearing in pre-season. He, he wants out as well. That could be another uh, big loss for him. So your relegation fan? Down. I've gone for uh, Birmingham and Reading. Um, Birmingham, um, oh, they just lost a lot from last season. They lost uh, Hotter, uh, Che Adams, uh, Morrison, the captain. He's gone to Reading, actually. Uh, Mahoney was a, a good loan signing they had as well from Bournemouth. I think he's gone to uh, Millwall, isn't he? Uh, so that's, that's quite a lot, considering they had a small squad anyway. Um, financially, they do seem to be sorted out. They've, they've signed um, uh, Sunjic, the, the Croatian uh, player, for I think it was seven... Seven million euros, so that, that, that is, a, that is an, an outlay there. But the rest of the squad doesn't look, uh, you know, fit for purpose to me. And the, and the, the other big red light for me, they, they were so good under a certain system, rigid, direct un, under Gary Monk, combative. They're changing now to a, 
footballing style of play under Pep Clotet. His only previous job, he was at Oxford, got sacked at Oxford in League One. So I would worry that if you haven't got the players trying to play out from the back, and you know that that it could be a recipe for disaster. Um, Reading, the other one, they were second bottom going into the uh, the January window, and then added a load of loan players that, that made them a lot better, got them out of trouble. Uh, the likes of Oliveira came in up front, uh, Lewis Baker from Chelsea, Martinez, the Arsenal goalkeeper, Ovi Ajaria from Liverpool. So that that gave them the push. Uh, they've lost those lone players now, not done enough to strengthen. I think they'll struggle. OK, and Brian, who do you think might be in peril this year? Yeah, it's a full house for Birmingham. Uh, obviously, if there are financial issues there, they could be. They could even face another points deduction towards the end of the season. Um, another one for me, Wigan Athletic. They finished quite poorly to the season. Uh, to the had a quite poor finish to the season last year, and they've lost a lot of their attacking players. James Vaughan's gone. Sean McDonald, Callum McManaman, Nick Powell, Devante Cole. It's tough to replace all those attacking players, and they, it doesn't look like they have done so too well. So um, I worry for Wigan this season. Right, very quickly, chaps. Anything else in the championship from an anti-post perspective, Mark? Uh, a couple of goal scorers. I mean, if Mopay stays, I would definitely back him, but I, there's a big question mark there. So there's two um, goal scorers. Bobby Reid, um, he got 19 for Bristol City last time he was in the championship. Didn't make the grade in the Premier League, but no real disgrace in that. And given Cardiff haven't been that busy signing forwards, I think he might start up front. Uh, and uh, Jack Marriott at, at Derby, Lampard didn't like him for some reason, but I always thought he looked an absolute live wire when he did start. And um, I, I think he can prove Lampard wrong. Dan? I've got three that I'll quickly run through. Carl and Grant, the top one, 14 to 1. I thought he looked good actually in the Premier League for Huddersfield uh, last season, so you'd, you'd have to expect him to do even better in the league below. Benny Cafobo, a few years ago, was scoring a lot of goals in the Championship at Wolves. Uh, in previous years, I think he's gone up right near the top of the market, 33 to 1 now. He has been playing uh, instead of Gregory Stokes' uh, new signing in pre season. And uh, I think he could, the, the new style of play there, they, they, they've got attacking fullbacks. I think they'll be more positive, Stoke. Chuck Sanike is the really, really big one, 175 to 1. Ex Arsenal, got a lot, got great technique about him, got 17 goals for MK Dons last season. If he gets a lot of Charlton's goals, I just, just think at that price, you know, worth an each way bet. OK, and Brian, anything else for you? Nothing else for me, no. The lads have taken my two in Carlin Grant and Bobby Reid, so um, they've talked through them. Always good to get an endorsement. Let's do League One next. Right, 10 seconds to promote Paddy Power Games. Um, Paddy Power Games, Paddy Power Games, Paddy Power Games. <laughs> Advertising, it's easy when you know how. Paddy Power, enough of the nonsense. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Welcome back to the first Racing Post football postcast of the new season. We are going to look at League One, the best bets to win the title, to go up, to be top scorer, to be relegated, handicaps, everything else. Brian, how do Paddy Power bet on League One? We have Sunderland at Favs at seven to two, Portsmouth next in the betting five to one, Ipswich eleven to two, followed by Rotherham nine to one, Peterborough ten to one, Doncaster Rovers and Lincoln are sixteen to one, Burton Albion eighteen to one, Fleetwood Town twenty two to one, Oxford MK Dons Coventry all twenty fives and thirties bar those. And Dan, you go first. Who wins League One this I'm season? I'm going to go for Portsmouth. I mean, they're getting better year on year under Jacket. I mean, you could say, oh, they're a big club. They didn't go up last season, but eighty eight points. You know, there's not a lot more that you can do there. If they get that or better, they're going to have a great chance. The obvious downside is Matt Clark leaving. Uh, he, he went to Brighton, so he, he was a kingpin at the back. But they've, they've brought Sean Raggett in, who was a decent centre back at Lincoln. Harness adds quality in midfield as well as he's come from Burton. Ellis Harrison up front. They've already got goals there. The, the likes of Pittman, Lowe, Hawkins, Evans all scored goals last season for him. So Portsmouth, the main one. Peter Barrett is the other the other one for promotion. I think um, they've got Mark, kept the key players, Marcus Madison, who's an assist machine, Ivan Tony. I think they've done some good business as well in the window. I think Peterborough will go well. Never heard assist machine. I love that. <laughs> Great new expression. Uh, Brian, who do you think is going to win the title this year? I have Portsmouth backed as well at 5-1. to one. Kenny Jackett, Dan touched upon it. He knows this league inside out. He's been promoted with Millwall and Wolves before. He should be looking to complete his hat trick this season. And another fancy I have is Doncaster. They're eleven to two for promotion, and um, sixteen to one each way bet for the league title. They've gotten in a good manager, Darren Moore, who was perhaps unfortunate to get sacked last season. And if they keep hold of their striker, John Marquis, it will be a tough one to keep hold of. But if they do, I think he can fire them towards promotion. Full house for Pompey Lango. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, just I'm trying to think of different things to say about them. But I, I think last season, I mean, they absolutely ran away with it for the first 
first half of the campaign and then got pegged back by two really good teams in Luton and Barnsley. That wasn't sort of normal football for, for League One standards. And I, I think they probably would have, um, you know, won the league in a normal year. Um, and you also look back to they got dragged into the Football League trophy and an FA Cup run that had replays, you know, and that they were winning at Norwich and, and stuff like that. I mean, hopefully Kenny Jackett just plays the 11 worst players he can find in the cup comp. There's no need to go and win them anymore, you know. I mean, they've won the FA Cup not that long ago. The Football League trophy was a nice one. They haven't been to Wembley for a while, but, I mean, just forget about it and, and gain promotion. So, um, if you're listening, Kenny, um, you know you know what to do there. Um, but I, I agree totally that I think Portsmouth... I mean, Portsmouth were favourites against Sunderland in the playoffs and they're now sort of double the price of them. Well, tell me, tell me about Sunderland then. I like them more this year than I did last year, but the big question question mark though is the manager Jack Ross who didn't do a good job I mean he, he had the tools in place um, you know th for the last 12 months and th their attacking output in terms of shots and, and stuff like that just was was really poor uh, and so they do need to improve they've managed to keep McGeady uh, the goalkeeper McLaughlin is very good uh, McNulty I think will score goals in the division and Dobson signed from Walsall gives them a little bit more to play in, in midfield he was really important player um, for, for Walsall I think the manager, if he doesn't go up, he maybe he'll get the sack, you know, if they don't start particularly well. My concern, if you're back Steve in... Steve Bruce can take over when he's well, been sacked. Yeah, 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 he could, Boston, he he could but I just think with Sunderland, you're almost hoping that if they don't make a lightning quick start, that they make a, a pretty poor one and get rid of the manager and make that. You see it sometimes where they make, they're doing okay and it's not quite enough, but I... I, I would rather back Portsmouth, definitely. If I was to chuck an outsider in there, it would be Burton. They have lost um, Harness to um, Pompey, which I think is a real um, big one. But in Aikens, they've got... I thought he was the biggest threat I saw in League One last season when he absolutely destroyed Southend. Uh, and I just couldn't believe how good he was, really. And Boyce is back from his injuries. Uh, John Joe Tall in midfield might just be the type of player um, that Nigel Clough can get the best out of. He, he's done it before with players that have got that natural ability that kind of just lose their way a little bit. And, you know, this was a team that reached the League Cup semi finals. I don't know, they were absolutely humiliated by Manchester City, but uh, they beat Luton, they beat a lot of the big teams. They've got a small squad, might just go well, or even on the handicap, something like that. Okay, there's loads of other markets, obviously, in League One uh, handicap, relegation, top six, top scorer, match bets, etc., etc. Dan, what else should we be backing? Uh, relegation, I'm actually going to put um, Doncaster up with overpriced. I, I, I think Marquise looks like he's, he's he's on his way out to me. There's a lot of interest in him. Apparently wants to move back south. Uh, Tommy Rowe, they've lost, who was an important player from last season. Herbie Kane, they had on, on, on loan from Liverpool, was a big, big player for them. They've lost... Uh, and the left back Danny Andrews gone as well. Butler, the centre back's gone. There's a lot of that team that's uh, that's disappeared. And 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 in that league, as we saw last season, there was a such a there was a mass of clubs, weren't there, in the middle and, and, and towards the bottom. There was hardly any points between them. You got towards the last six games of the season. Yeah, relegation wise, there are about well, yeah, fifteen so, teams. So in the if you drop though, from that, you know, fringes of the playoffs to the middle part of the table, you could easily be at risk. And I just think that, that uh, nine to one, uh, given the players they've lost, is uh, is worse bets around. The, the the more solid relegation bet, I would say, Tranmere, who have come up, uh, they uh, they've lost James Norwood, who got uh, twenty nine of their sixty three goals in League Two last season. That is just a Where's huge he gone? loss. He's going to switch. switch. Oh. Um, and I, I mean, it, it's I, I agree with Mark's mention about about that. It isn't such a big gap from League Two to League One. As, as as the other gaps, I think you know, that was for, off air, Dan, yeah, that. yeah, but that's. Uh, but yeah. I, I think you're right there. But to lose such a prolific scorer and you're going up a level, I think it's tough. Dan, very quickly on Ipswich because they're the other team. There's three dominate the, the top of the market. Yeah. How, how do you see them? I going? think they'll probably start slowly because uh, they've not done uh, a great deal of um, the, the, the squad thin at the moment. Norwood's going to be a, a fantastic uh, addition though for them. I think he, he will adapt to the higher level and they so missed the goal scorer last season. Like, so many times I watched them, they were in games and just woeful in front of goal. I, I think they'll make the playoffs. OK, uh, what else have you got for us as far as League One goes, Brian? Feel free to uh, stuff Dan's Doncaster <laughs> verdict back down his throat. <laughs> 
That's fair enough. If Marquis goes, that they could struggle. But no, we'll see at the end of the season who's who got that one right. But um, relegation wise, we have um, obviously it's a, it's a strange one with Barry and Bolton both starting off on minus twelve points. We're actually top price on Bolton to uh, to go down. We have them four to five. Um, I think there's a bit of disagreement in the office every day. They're chopping and changing from four to five to four to six. But if you don't think they can uh, overcome that twelve point deduction, four to five, there might be value there. Um, another one I like for relegation, and they were tipped up as well in the racing post is South End. Uh, if the season started in January, they'd already be cut adrift in early. The preseason hasn't gone well for them either, and um, I, I, I don't think they're they're going to stay up this season. Righty ho, Mark. What else have you got for us? I, don't think, I don't, can't see Kevin Bond lasting the season. They didn't massively inspire me when I saw them towards the end, even though he kept them up. Um, relegation. Accrington got one of the smallest budgets around. Billy Key, the star striker. He's he's had these um, sort of well documented off um, off field issues with you know battling depression. He hasn't been seen at the club in the whole of pre season. So uh, I mean, I think. You know, he's somebody that Accrington rely a lot on um, for, for quality. So that would be one. In the golden boot, um, Norwood has been mentioned. If you fancy Ipswich to win the division, I think you're better off just backing Norwood to, to win it. I mean, he was absolutely he just comes alive in the penalty box. His movement so good. Um, looked like he could play quite a bit higher than League Two, actually. I know he's, he's getting on, which is maybe why it sort of teams higher up the league didn't take a you chance but these guys can't you Nicky Forster and those guys yeah. from, from yesteryear they, you know, they keep going and keep banging them in don't you, they you know, people didn't realise how good Jamie Vardy was for a long long time you know because he'd come through non-league they well, kind of get spotted do they uh, you know? they, they look down upon aren't yeah, they I yeah. think if you come through non-league whereas if you start yeah. at Manchester United you have to have 10 bad years before people realise you're no good and the non-league it works the other way around you've really got to prove yourself so he would be one and again in the golden boot if you like Sunderland I think McNulty who scored an absolute bucket load 23 for Coventry in League 2 um, when, when he was sort of down the divisions before went up to the championship didn't cut the mustard at Reading but I mean he's sort of around about the 20 to 1 mark I'd rather back him there than Sunderland at what 3 to 1 or whatever um, and then in the top promoted club I think Link, uh, it looks a match between Lincoln and MK Dons. There's a bit of a word going around for MK Dons. I can't see it uh, myself. I thought Lincoln were definitely better than them last year. They, they're not a great XG team, Lincoln, but they, they play the boxes sort of yeah. better than most. And they're very strong at the back. They've added a little bit of quality as well um, with, with George Grant and also Payne coming in from Bradford. Just gives them sort of a new dimension to their attack. I think they'll... Uh, I, th I think they'll be in and around the playoffs. I think they could be top six. Manager's good, isn't he? Uh, the cow. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't just say one of them. The uh, cow. Well, I did deliberately because I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel a bit sorry for him sometimes. He's no, the manager, isn't he? He is the manager, but I. I seen quite a lot of Lincoln and um, it's an absolute double act it is an absolute uh, Nicky does a lot of the tactical work on the pitch you can see that um, and they are well coached ok yeah no I like them I'd be I'd be really interested to see them get a chance at another level up actually or even two levels up yeah I, I think they've, they've got a higher opinion of themselves quite rightly they turned down a hole I think um, you know there's no point going there you might as well wait for a, a no. good championship job I think Yep. OK, excellent. All done on League One. Let's look at League Two now. Um, Brian, take it away with a show on League Two from Paddy Power. Yeah, we have Bradford at six to one favourites, Salford City fifteen to two, Mansfield are seventeen to two, Plymouth seventeen to two, Scunthorpe, Northampton are both twelve to one, Forest Green fourteens, Colchester, Walsall are both sixteens, Swindon 18s, Exeter 22s, Leighton Orient 22s and 25 pair of those. And Brian, I think you're going to play your joker on League 2 on you. Who do you like here? Uh, Northampton Town are my yeah they're my nap my outright nap for for promotion this season they're eleven to four for promotion I was on them last season um, they drew far too many games but uh, halfway through the season Keith Curl came in and there was an, an upturn in their fortunes he's been busy in the window this summer they have lost uh, John Joe O'Toole but I do expect them to make the playoffs at least this season they've got Matthew Warburton a new striker who's come up his first season in the football league I think he was um, very prolific in the non leagues and I I do expect him to to take the step up. Excellent. Um, so it's North. Are you going to back them each way or just promotion? We'll back them each way. We'll back them each way at twelve to one, and they're also yeah eleven to four for uh, for promotion. Okay, Mark, who's your uh, League Two good thing? I think this is probably my strongest fancy in the EFL. It's Mansfield, who were the best team not to go up last season. They missed out on automatic promotion too. 
two really good teams, Lincoln and MK Dons, and a Berry team that couldn't afford the squad that they built, and you know are now paying for it. I mean, an absolute joke that they're allowed to get promoted. You know, if you can't pay your your players, um, but Mansfield will feel really hard done by by that. They lost the final day shootout to MK Dons to go up automatically. Lost a playoff semi final on penalties. Um, they were clearly the best team not to go up. There was big rumours that they were going to really cut costs. It hasn't happened just because they brought in a, a novice coach in John Dempster. Um, I'm not sure that Flickcroft was that brilliant for them anyway. So it's not like you're going from Pep Guardiola you know, to, to somebody that's a complete novice. They've managed to sign Nicky Maynard, who scored an absolute bucket load for Berry last season, and Andy Cook, who got, I think, 15 for... He was definitely into double figures for Walsall in League One. Let's not forget that when Cook and uh, Norwood were at Tranmere together, people thought that Cook was the, the more prolific marksman, and, and, and I think he'll do really well in League Two. Their defence was the best in the division last year. They've kept all of the main components they needed to, and they've added goals to their team. They have lost Tyler Walker, um, but like I, said, I think Maynard and Cook compensates for that. Uh, CJ Hamilton's a good player. I like Danny Rose as well. Um, I, I'd be amazed if Mansfield are not sort of really knocking on the door of automatic again. So That's I mean, they, they look a, it's a they very look, strong case. They, they look a, one. Yeah, they look a really strong each way play. I mean, it's it's a competitive league, um, but I mean, I'd be backing them sort of rather than some of the others that have come down. I'm never massively sure about the relegated team, so I'm, I'm going to take. Mansfield to prove that you know that they were a little bit unlucky last year. Right then, so Northampton a very strong fancy for Brian. Mansfield a very strong fancy for Mark. Dan, what are your views? Oh, well, the relegated teams. <laughs> which is, uh, no Scunthorpe. I just think the manager there, Paul Hurst, he's got a uh, done a good job uh, lower leagues before. Got Grimsby up from the National League. Nearly got Shrewsbury incredibly into the Championship. It was very very close to achieving a miracle there. I think went into Ipswich really at the wrong time. I mean the cost cutting that was that was going on there. I, I wouldn't blame him too much for that. And he's got a better ch chance of succeeding at Scunthorpe. I took uh, Songo from um, Frank Songo from um, Plymouth, who was an important midfield player for them. So that's a good sign that you can you can get off of one of the, the, the your top rivals in the uh, in in the promotion betting. I've added Butler uh, from from Doncaster, you know, decent um, no nonsense uh, centre back. Still got Lee Novak up front, who's good at, good for goals at that level. Van Veen as well could score goals for him in in League Two. Uh, I think they'll go well. The other one is uh, for promotion. I'd say Forest Green are going to go well. Everybody's focusing on the players that they've lost. They've lost uh, Christian Doidge, who's gone up to here, Bernie, and they've lost uh, Reuben Reid, uh, who, who's, who's, I think it's past his best anyway, Reuben Reid. They've added a couple of less well-known players, but Aaron Collins, who they've signed from uh, Morecambe, he was on a short-term deal at Morecambe, but he made his name at Newport, got a move to Wolves, lost his way a little bit, but he's on the way back now. Got eight goals in 15 games for Morecambe, who, who were struggling like, like mad last season. Also got Matty Stevens from Peterborough as well. He scored lots and lots of goals in the non-league. I think he can do it in League Two. So Forest Greener is the, is the next uh, for tip for promotion. Tremendous stuff, lads. You've obviously spent all summer studying hard. The level of knowledge here is ridiculous. Um, what else have we got League Two-wise? Brian, what do you like? Um, for relegation, I like Macclesfield at seven to two. Um, Sol Campbell did miracle work to keep them in the, in the football league last season, but it's going to be extremely difficult to kick on from that, especially with the financial strains of the club this season. They've lost twenty goals in uh, that they had last season in Scott Wilson and Harry Smith, and I fear for them to to make the drop out of the football league this season. Okay, Mark. Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, I I, I agree with all of that on on the relegation front. Um, Sol Campbell keeps them up again. He's done. Unbelievable job. I'm not sure he'll stay. I mean, surely he'll get a bit a better job somewhere along the line if he does well. And if he doesn't do well, then um, obviously Macclesfield are going to be in big trouble. Two sort of lower down on the outright markets, maybe for handicaps or or promotion. One uh, Dan's already mentioned. Forest Green, um, you know, they've lost Brown to Huddersfield, which is, a, a, I suppose, a key player. But they're, they're, they're quite shrewd in the transfer market. And Colchester, who've lost key players, Frankie Kent, and uh, who went to Peterborough, and Schmodix went to Bristol City. I thought they were pretty close last year in terms of the promotion reckoning. They had an injury crisis late on in midfield. They've added Giovanni Brown from Cambridge. So they have replaced Smodix probably as well as what they could have done, I think, in terms of that creativity. A couple in the golden boot market. 
I'm going to be a, a judge of a good judge. And Dan mentioned Aaron Collins. Also, Ali Maxwell from Not The Top 20 pod uh, really likes Collins as well. He's around about 66 to one shot. I mean, if he can score one in two for Morecambe, then, you know, if he gets one in two for Forrest Green, he's going to be very close. And, and Maynard's a class act. He's, you know, he's, he's been in the Premier League before. Showed his appetite was still there last year with 21 um, goals for Berry. See no reason why he can't get 20 plus again, really. And... The fact he's gone to Mansfield, you so many of these League Two strikers, you fear that if they do well, like Stockley last year for Exeter, they end up moving out of the division. I think for a, like a veteran player like Maynard, that's less likely. Excellent. Dan, what else have you got? Uh, well, really oh, sorry, Dan, have you enjoyed the battle between me and Mark to see who can keep their earpiece in the <laughs> oh, I'm having a terrible as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for relegation at Oldham, another big price one, uh, 17 to 2. Uh, I think they're a bit of a basket case, uh, for want of a better term, really. Uh, the, the, the chairman, I mean, they had the situation with Paul Scholes going in and then leaving about a month later last season. Uh, I, 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 the manager they've got, on, an ex-Monaco manager now, uh, Lauren Banid, uh, and, and I'll just look at the, the looking at the pre-season results. They drew 2-2 with Ashton, who are a Northern Premier side. Lost 2-0 at home to Stockport, who, who have gone up to the National League, but I don't expect... Similar sort of clubs, though, Monaco and Oldham, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you do well at one, you don't. <laughs> so I looked, I mean, pre-season, you can say, oh, well, maybe you can have bad results in pre-season, but, you know, they're playing their strongest team. And I'm looking at the players they've lost. Uh, they lost Rob Hunt to Swindon out of the defence, lost uh, George Edmondson to Rangers. Uh, Peter Clark, who had there, was, you know, centre-back. I think he's trying to earn a, a contract at Fleetwood, losing a lot of good players, not replacing them with quality, as far as I can see, and I I think they'll, they'll be uh, struggling. Um, in terms of top scorer, I'm going to give uh, Owen Doyle of Bradford at 12 to 1. I think it's got uh, could go well at a big price. Everyone's focusing on Clayton Donaldson, who they've brought in. Um, they also signed James Vaughan, didn't they? They signed two strikers, Bradford, this summer. But the, the manager there, Gary Bowyer, he's talking talking up Doyle. He thinks playing up with a, a more of a, a physical striker is going to help him uh, lots. He's got a great goal scoring record at higher, actually. He's scored goals in League One, and I think he'll get a lot in League Two. OK, let's try and work a nice little uh, anti-post acker, maybe. Should we go with a tr an each-way Trixie? Let's do the official Racing Post football postcast Trixie. I'm actually going to, I think, I'm going to do it based on how compelling everyone's uh, votes are. So in the championship, we have Mark very sweet on Leeds. You're very sweet on Fulham, aren't you? And you've gone for, I uh, can't remember who you went for, Brian. You went for Cardiff, didn't you? Cardiff from my pick, after the two lads pick, but yeah, uh, Cardiff. I, 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 I'm not that comfortable. I don't want to put Leeds in, actually. I've got Fulham, Fulham. You happy to go with Fulham, Brian? I'm happy with Fulham as well. Yeah. Okay, so Dan, you hold sway there. Yeah. In League Two, I think we have to go with, with Portsmouth. Yeah, I think yeah. you boys, are, everyone's very confident there. And in League, th in League Two, it's very difficult, actually, because I like the Northampton case. Mark was very, very strong on on um, Mansfield, and then you chipped in with who did you chip in with? Uh, Stunthorpe. I, I Scunthorpe. think the Mansfield case was the was the you know the strong one. Can you go in Mansfield there, Brian, or not? Yeah, they've been the, they've been the most back team since um, since Mark did them up on Monday in the in the race and post. So I'm I'm happy to try them. In. Northampton's a little. A little bit risky, isn't it, for, I think, for a, a multiple. You wouldn't mind backing okay. them in a single. So we're going to go in with an each-way Trixie, OK, of Port, of uh, Fulham for the Championship, Portsmouth for League One, and Mansfield for League Two. So to give you an idea of what you've got to state, if you have a £2.50 £2 each-way Trixie on, the, uh, on those three, that's going to cost you 20 quid, isn't it? Four bets, so yeah. So if you want to do it for a pound, it's going to cost you eight pound. But the beauty of these bets is that you, they hopefully last you the entire season. And if you, if, you get it, if you get them all up, you don't need to pay for your holiday next summer. So those are our three. Right, we're going to be back in a set looking at the first weekend of action. Everything is better when it's bigger. Paddy Power's Same Game Multi allows you to combine a number of selections from a single match into one big bet. Check out the Same Game Multi tab and get building your bet. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Welcome back. It's the Racing Post Football Postcast. Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon, Dan Childs and Brian McDonnell from Paddy Power. 
And we're going to look ahead to the first round of matches in the Football League, starting on Friday with Luton versus Middlesbrough. Basically, Mark and Dan, I know you've been studying hard, so I want three selections from each of you for the opening weekend, and then we'll do our naps. Mark, away you go. My, my first, three first, or you're yeah, going to go in all... Okay, three. I'll go for Bradford as my number one um, pick in earlier bit of the episode. Uh, Dan mentioned about the strike force that Bradford have got. I mean, they are well fancied for promotion. I mean, they're a team that probably shouldn't even be in League Two. When you look at their squad, the backing that they've got, um, you know, it was just bad management, I think, last year that took them down. I expect them to be bang up for um, sort of in, in that sort of top three or four, definitely. And they, they're at home to a Cambridge team that's lost Giovanni Brown um, to Colchester and also Wes Houlihan, who, you know, the star playmaker who'd been on sort of trial. or he, he was putting Cambridge on trial, really, rather than the other way around. He's decided not to take up the option. I think mean, Cambridge, look, probably if you're looking for a second relegation bet at the moment, they would be the ones at sort of a price. And uh, Bradford, just odds on, I think come the end of the season, there'll be a big old gap between those two. So that would definitely um, be one. I know it's a couple Where's of... Hulahan would have been some player? I mean, what a player Jalen. that would Where's have been. Where's he going to go? Because he's decent, isn't he? I mean, he was... I mean, he, because he was at Norwich, I wonder if there was sort of like a location issue where maybe Fort Cambridge I, wasn't I, too... Over, overseas, though. He's looking at... An Is over, he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah maybe, he's, report, ma yeah, yeah. Know, maybe he's just found some yeah. um, some decent dough um, abroad. So that, that, that they would be probably my, my number one um, selection. I also like the look um, of Rotherham away at AFC Wimbledon. We didn't talk about Rotherham in the um, in the outright pick, but again, I think they'll be um, top six in League One. They were a little bit unlucky to be relegated. Gave it a great fight, and they got promoted the last time they were in this um, level under Paul Warren. Uh, Ladapo should score goals. He did score goals for a relegated team last season. I just don't know where the goals are coming from from AFC Wimbledon. They keep on sort of producing these miracle after miracle. I'm not quite sure how they do it. And then uh, a big price, I'll go. For, I'll leave Forest Green um, for others. I know that they're well fancied, but I'm going to go for Gillingham, uh, a big price at Doncaster. Doncaster, I looked at the team that played in that playoff semi final um, against Cholton when they were brilliant and, and probably should have won, but they got knocked out. I think there's three or four players left from that starting eleven. Been absolutely decimated. I think there are question marks over Darren Moore. They didn't look like a world coach team when he was at West Brom. And you look, you take like Wilkes, and he was so good for them on the wing. And Herbie Kane in midfield. They could be big regressors this year. Gillingham under Steve Evans, you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Um, but if they're to be any good, I think it will be early on when he's kind of. I say magic, that's probably not the right word, but um, before, yeah, before he sort of starts to annoy everybody in terms of the crowd and the players, if he's to get them going, I think it'll be early on. They've lost um, Eves, which is a big one, but I quite like Mandron, who's come from Colchester, and I think he's a sort of direct physical presence that Steve Evans will probably like working with. At around about three to one, they could be your outsider to follow. So Mark's three, Bradford, Rotherham and Gillingham. Dan, who are your three? I've got two from the championship uh, for Fulham uh, at, uh, at Barnsley. I mean, I've given you the positive case for Fulham, so I'll give you the negative case for Barnsley. Barnsley had the best defensive record in League One last season. The three key elements of that were Adam Davies, the goalkeeper. He's gone. Liam Lindsay, he's gone to, to, to Stoke. And Ethan Pinnock, who's gone to Brentford. So they've lost the three key elements. Of that They've replaced with younger players, uh, uh, Ipo Halme was one of them centre back from Leeds. Been shipping a load of goals in pre season. Up against else, <laughs> <laughs> up, <laughs> up against that Fulham attack that I've mentioned, Kanoka, Cavalero, Mitrovic, uh, Kenny in behind, I think they're gonna they're gonna struggle. Sessignon still there? Sessignon's still there. I'm not banking on him still being there. There's so much talk about him going, but even without You'd have to fancy him. Uh, it's a bonus if he if he's there and he plays. Blackburn's the other one at home to Charlton. We've given the negative case uh, for Charlton. I mean, I, I spoke about positively about Blackburn. Bradley Duck there. He always gets gets your goals. Uh, the the downing going in there. Uh, Bradley Johnson. They look a, a solid team for me. I think they'll start a home win. And the other one was uh, Forest Green against against Oldham. I think Forest Green are going to be pushing for promotion strongly. I think Oldham will be uh, looking over the shoulders. OK, well done. Let's get the naps for week one. This will not be beaten. Go on, Brian. Kick us off for the new season with the first nap. Make it a good one, my friend. 
Yeah, I'm going to play it safe in week one. I want our Naps to get off to, to a fine start this season. So I've picked one of my promotion picks at home to one of my relegation picks. It's Brentford uh, at home to Birmingham. Brentford are four to six. But um, it's at home at Griffin Park. It's the beginning of the end of Griffin Park. It's going to be absolutely bouncing this season for every single game. And I think they're they're a good pick to get us off to a winning start. Jolly good. I must get to Griffin Park. Never been. Oh, no, I went past the new ground so. on the train the other day. Looks nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I must go there. Right, I'm going to quickly nab Forest Green before either of you two. They're odds against with Paddy Power. 11 to 10 to win at home to Oldham. You've heard the case of why Oldham are going to struggle. I think that's a pretty safe one. Lango? Uh, yeah, Bradford, um, as well as the forwards of Doyle, Vaughan and, and Donaldson. I, I think Richards Everton, who's coming from Accrington, uh, is dropping down a level. Akpan in midfield. Um, this is a one of my sort of promotion fancies against sort of a live relegation shot. So, uh, shade of odds on, I think you've got to be on. And Dan? Blackburn to beat Charlton. Charlton lost some big players, lost the Rebo to Rangers, lost Bielik, lost uh, Bauer, the centre-back. I think they're going to struggle. OK, so the Naps are Forest Green, Bradford, Blackburn, Blackburn and... Brentford. Brentford. And Brentford. And will we be able to get a little enhanced acker on that one, do you think, Brian? Absolutely, yeah. It's coming up at just over 10 to 1, but we will get that enhanced on our football page today. Excellent. So if you go to paddypower.com and have a little hunt around for the postcast, enhanced acker, you will get it. Chaps, that's absolutely superb. I mean, I have lots of very positive comments on Twitter and in person about the football postcast. And what people love is it's no nonsense and it's real authentic knowledge. And what you've heard here today from Mark, from Dan, from Brian, you know, the, the, I don't think I've heard of 95% of the players you've mentioned, but you, you guys have got the knowledge. So do stick with us every week throughout the season for the Racing Post Football Postcast. And of course, we're back next week to look ahead to the Premier League season as well. Looking forward to that. Please do join us. Friends, or maybe more. Earn a 20 quid free bet for every friend you refer to Paddy Power, thanks to our Friends with Benefits programme. Log in to your Paddy Power account and share your referral link to get started. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gamble aware.